Hello, today we are talking about operational amplifiers, op amp for short. There you see the circuit symbol and it only has three terminals and it does not obey Kirchhoff's current law because the power supply which is not shown it has to connect to a power supply it's a powered IC provides the current I3 or the output current no current flows in or out of the two terminals and there is no voltage drop between them so these two rules are the only thing that you have to remember when looking at your circuits okay when looking at your circuits if you get these two rules in your head you will see them properly and hopefully you will be able to do the problems so let's analyze the uh, two basic uses or two basic configurations of this circuit when used for amplifiers or amplification there is your non-inverting circuit that means that the input is fed to the plus input of the op amp and the output is just a larger copy of the input because there's no voltage difference between these inputs that would mean that the V in voltage is also across the minus input, which means it is across R1. You may have to rewind the video and let that sink in. Because there is no difference between the plus and minus input, as far as voltage is concerned, the V in, which as you can clearly see is applied to the plus input, is also across the minus input. Therefore, it is going to be applied to R1. And since the other R end of R1 is connected to that ground symbol or zero voltage, ground can be always taken as zero voltage. It means that the voltage across R1 is the voltage V in. So we can see what is happening here. And I've drawn there on the right hand side a voltage divider. Basically the voltage V out is fed across R2 and R1. So we can easily find out what V in is in terms of V out because that was done in lecture two. So let us analyze our voltage divider now. And we remember that the voltage across R1 of a voltage divider is the total voltage using the ratio um, resistor ratio r1 over r1 plus r2 and when we manipulate that to make v out the subject of the expression and we simplify it we end up with the classic formula for this configuration that v out is equal to v in times 1 plus r2 over r1 R2 is called the feedback resistor. All right, here is an inverting amplifier. As you see, the configuration is a little different. The input is fed to the negative input of the op amp, which means that the amplified copy available at the output is going to be inverted. When the input starts to go positive, the output will start to go negative. And when the input goes negative, the output will start to go more positive. So that is inversion. Now, once again, because there's no voltage difference between the plus and minus input, 
the Vn is across R1 and the V out is across R2. Can you see that? Look at the two inputs, plus and minus. The plus input is correct, is connected directly to ground. That's the little ground symbol that you see there. The ground symbol is always zero volts. So zero volts must also be at the minus input. And since zero volts is now then at one end of both R1 and R2, the V out is going to be across the R2 and the V in is going to be across the R1. Now the current in both R1 and R2, regardless of their value, is also going to be the same current because no current can flow in or out of the op amp negative input. Therefore, all the current flowing through R1 is going to go right up and flow through R2. So that makes the equivalent circuit as shown there. We've included the ground connection directly between the two resistors, R1 and R2. And then we derive our formula, which is quite simple. For the current, we have V in minus V out because the V out is on the negative end of the resistor. That's because of the direction of I as shown there, V in minus V out divided by R1 plus R2 to give you the total value. But because of that center ground connection, the current is also equal to V in minus zero over R1 or V out. Zero minus V out. Ha, here is the key. Notice that. Zero minus V out because the zero point occurs in the middle of those two resistors. So zero, and remember I told you that the ground connection is zero. So zero minus V out, you get your signs correct, divided by R2. And then when we make V out the subject of that expression, we get a negative V in on the other side multiplied by R2 divided by R1. Now the negative sign always appears in this inverting circuit because as I said, what you get for V out is going to be a negative copy of the input. So if the input's going positive, the voltage is going positive, the output's going negative. And when the input's going negative, the output is going positive. Now, the, as you can clearly see, the gain, the amplification factor, the multiplier, remember beta in transistors, the gain for this circuit is determined simply by the two resistor values. So we can take an op amp and change its gain simply by changing those resistors. And that's a wonderful thing because this op amp becomes a building block for all sorts of useful devices. But you must remember that internally the op amp is a rather complex circuit. It's, it consists of lots of parts, rather complex device. But we don't have to be concerned with all that and now the integrated circuits are quite cheap because of the advances in manufacturing technology. But you, once again, must remember that the same voltage is on both the plus and minus inputs and that there is no current flowing either in or out of the plus and minus inputs. If you will remember those two things when trying to solve your problems, 
you will get them done a lot easier. They will become manageable. So I'm going to leave this video with these circuits which you can copy down and attempt to solve. We will do another video to show you the work solutions at a later time. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.